restart it, we'll go. Yeah, I'll restart the Discord real quick so you guys can see that. I'm so sorry about this chat. This is like the first time it's happened. Awkward. Discord. I think we're back. Yep. Okay. I, your stream's working and we can hear you. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure where we cut off, but I'll just keep uh, talking about Davey because that's probably the most interesting part. Yeah. Could you um, um maybe tell the viewers like um so you getting that trinket means that you got to exalted with all with the Ultra Valley PvP faction without dying a single time in Ultra Valley. How did you manage that? Um. I think on this server, AV is kind of unbalanced, let's say. So oh, yeah. Horde, Horde is losing roughly like 90, 95% of the AVs. So most of the AVs I either joined. Uh, and if it's early in the day, the games are kind of uh, like 10 v 15, right? So they either time out or the Alliance just slaughter us. Mm -hmm. So it was running either Rams or uh, killing some uh, Trogs. Uh, sometimes a little bit of defending in the base if, if like if you know what classes are in the game right so there's always the same people mostly uh, on certain times so you just know this guy will always run to that tower and as a warrior kind of tanky you have to watch out for casters mainly but like a red paladin won't one tap me if i have shield wall and trinkets and all the engineering stuff right so that's so you also you actually are fighting with people yeah too. you're actually participating a little bit, right? But it's, it's, I'm not 1v1ing. I'll be near a tower and when they try to run in, I'll hamstring them, for example, right? And I'll try to <laughs> bait them out in the open. And then when they're open, I'll try to fear them. And often they either trinket and then you just stun them and they get killed by archers, right? Mm -hmm. That's like the way I kill people. Like I wasn't gonna 1v1 a, a tier 3 red paladin, but you can bait them into believing they can either kill you and then they run in the open and they die. Uh, you can recover towers that way, but it's you have to know what classes are in the BG because if there's like three rogues in your base and you see a, a paladin, you're like, oh, I can kill the paladin. And you get like clapped with three rogues, then you, you die, right? So it's it's mainly just assessing what's gonna happen. But I imagine you must have had quite a bounty on your head as a hardcore player here and there. I don't think most people knew I was hardcore, right? Because um, I was I was not hiding in the cave 24-7. I was not in the hardcore guild, right? You just join newcomers or whatever, so it doesn't <laughs> look too obvious. And you just keep talking about the BG or trying to fart. You just try to not... Like, if you are AFK, like some hardcore players join the AV and go in the cave, right? That's obvious. Like, why is this guy AFK the whole BG? But I move around a lot. So it was never in the same spot. But I think one guy knew I was hardcore, tried to kill me a few times. <laughs> I think he's a Geldy of you, and I raided with him. We didn't get along that well, but he tried to kill me once or twice. But luckily, he wasn't so talented that it actually worked. But it got like two, like two K health or something. We might know so, who that is. We might know who that is. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but yeah, so like it's pretty cool to hear that you're actually like put in some effort in the AVs, kind of, instead of just AFKing as a hardcore. Yeah, I was under the... I heard about this, and I was under the impression you just stayed back and just, like, barely in reach of uh, honor, but the fact that you participated and actually killed people or, like, used the NPCs to kill people is really amazing, and I know people in Tier 3 that aren't smart enough to do that and contribute that much. Well, it's not like every BG I'm, I'm like, defending towers. It's just sometimes there was... They're capping our base towers with one or two guys, right? And then you can help a bit or uh, just like tag them while they're trying to cap a flag while they fear the NPCs away. Those kind of stuff. It's I'm not running cross mid and trying to cap a base tower and uh, then and say we had some players who tried to, right? And uh, mm. he died sadly because he forgot about the mine, so we ran into the mine. Oh no! Clapped oh. in one second, like hit by three. He's still playing though. Like it's, I think he, he died like twice in AV, but it's <laughs> device. Yeah, I think he got griefed once. Um, someone pulled all the mine NPCs on him, or not griefed. It was unintentional. Like, oh yeah, it's quicker to just die than fight your way out. And the guy pulled all the NPCs on him and he died. Like, <laughs> it's oh like God. sometimes 
Yeah. And then he just started releveling the next day. But that kind of so, stuff like sticks with you, right? I was gonna ask how do, um how do you or like the people in the guild would feel about say battlegrounds where hardcore players get to participate, but you know, if they die they don't lose their character? Um I think it's very uh, per person. I honestly don't think we should be able to. I honestly think we should never have been able to queue a BG. Because um, yeah. it causes the issue with, uh, like you said, hardcore players just joining AV, AFKing like 24 7, and GMs have to check that. Oh, yeah. Um, some people say you should be able to join normally and get all the rewards or do PvP as hardcore. Before at the 59 state, it was kind of pointless since it was only a few we could like reliably get into. I just don't think, like hardcore is hardcore. I don't think you should have any, um, if you want a PvP, you should be able to join. But if you AFK, you get a like first time three day uh, dessert and then five day 18 to up to a year, whatever. So mm -hmm. if you want to participate, you do it and otherwise you just don't. Because yeah, it, get, it gets to the That's point funny. like that either if they add six, like if I could join the Gs, I would rank on hardcore and get all the rank here. <laughs> and you just go rank 14, right? If you can die in BGs, what's, oh, yeah. there's, there's no risk. And it's just the gear so broken for certain classes that up till next, I'll probably wear like like my my rank 13, rank 12 gear and the weapons as well. It just forces you to PvP if you want to like min max. Uh, that's a very good hardcore. point. I haven't considered it. Thank you for the insight on it. Speaking of that, uh, I think we could move on to level 60 hardcore that's been announced. We have the image right here. Oh yeah, the main, the main topic, the big thing, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, can you show the announcement from the forums? Yeah, I am. Uh, if you could just elaborate a bit on what you guys want to achieve as hard choice with the level 60 rating. Are you guys planning on doing like AQ, nags, maybe even? Uh, yeah, that's the goal. Um, obviously, it's their fun and to challenge and get uh, like slowly uh, progress through the raids. Um, so we want to start with probably a ZG and MC um, when we get certain classes, because we're lacking certain classes, but we'll talk about that later. Um, so that's start clearing certain CG bosses. Um, clearing, let's say, the first three, four MC bosses, some trash, get uh, the reputation up. Um, that's the first goal, and then Folklear MC, uh, start doing Onis for um, the Oni Cloaks as well, since you need like everyone with one for Black Malaire pretty much. And then it's slowly progressing in AQ uh, 40. We'll probably start Black Malaire a little bit earlier, like before we have the Cloaks, right? You just do the first boss since it's kind of not that hard. Free. Yeah, it's free, and it's next to MC, so you could just do it at the end of, let's say, uh, and a full MC clear. Since there's no world boss, you don't have really have a time on how much uh, that you have to rush through things. Yeah, so the first yeah. like actual big barrier would probably be something like Vel, right? Uh, Phil, yeah, he's scary as, uh, as hell. I think the, for Phil, if you really want to make it easier, you kind of want most of your casters to, to either be benched or have an alt since you just rogue. have 30 warriors kill it which, ah, 30, or, rogues. No, or rogues rogues probably the easiest one since you have vanished for threat right so you have oh like, yeah like 30 rogues would probably be the preferred option just have your like three warriors that can tank the rest rogues and then priests and that that's pretty much it you could do suppression uh, room pretty easy too then with all the rogues suppression room is i'm not not afraid of suppression room to be fair it's you just, just need one hunt it's annoying. If you know the pulse and how it works and you have one decent hunter, you should be fine. I was um, gonna worry about the dragons before suppression room after Vale. Oh the the five packs. Um yeah, they're I guess they're they're kinda scary, especially the AOV AOE mobs, right? The volleys. Mm -hmm. But again, if you have two or three hibernates and you drop a few target dummies near the fucking door, right? You just you can if you want, you can drop like let the mobs pass and the five people drop a target dummy but and then drop off. So if they break free, they're just on the target dummy since they don't hit the door. There's like all that kind of stuff you can just do. Um 
since after they hibernated once, I don't think it's that much of an issue. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that, like every pack you have to really think a little bit about, right? Since if you do it on softcore, if one guy dies, it doesn't matter that much. But on hardcore, if people just two, three die, then you can't sustain that for week in, week out. I feel like AQ and Nags also could be like very hard to do as hardcore because some of the fights and like pools are like very RNG dependent. So like something like Kalthazad is like super, super RNG dependent. Oh, I just uh, I just want to see Archers do the Hagen dance with this server's uh, well, uh, Hagen is... dance. I'm I'm not I'm not too hyped about either. Um, because uh, when we like when I raided with that uh, Tepsi right, it we didn't really have much deaths on that. But sometimes mm -hmm. you lagged a little bit, right? And the position yep. didn't adapt, and you just die. And that was with world buffs, so you killed it before the actual dance mechanic for the rest of the raid. So only the melee had to do the dance, pretty much. So yeah, yeah. but that's so far away that honestly, I don't really want to think about it. It's because <laughs> that's I, I'm not looking forward to that. Yeah, because there is like a really big argument for like, what if a lag spike comes in on like the certain boss you like cannot have a lag spike and it just wipes the raid? Well, if a lag spike, you can make a, an agreement. If a lag spike, you just instantly spam pack three and then you don't die. Um, but yeah, that's that's just rough. Like it can happen, but with Petri Flask, like unless you're like all get one shot, you should never have a raid wipe. Like you can have tank deaths, DPS deaths, healer deaths, or player mistakes and shit. But with like everyone having batteries, which is pretty much the meta, right? You can't mm. have a, a raid wipe at this point. It does um, kind of sound I, like? Oh, sorry, you can. I um send this picture to you later. But if you can find it, Zoomer, the one about the um the nodes in the open world if you can put that up yeah um the patchy flask reminded me i'm just gonna talk about it now because i may forget it um to raid on turtle is much more different than to raid on uh, retail hardcore right now because on retail hardcore this is all uh, it's a different game obviously and the biggest difference is that world buffs sort of thing so in turtle you don't have world buffs they removed it from raids now you have Paladin, Shame, and buff stacking, which is um, it's a gain for melees in some situations, like DPS wise, but it's a health trade off. Like the world buffs weren't really just for damage; they were also for the defensive, the extra main stat, the extra stamina, the extra health. Huge difference. Casters could go from like four thousand health to seven, six thousand health. So without this on Turtle, um, you're gonna be probably going to have 40 people in your raid with flask of the titans right uh, yes that's uh, that's uh, uh, indeed the thing so you need hp you need a lot of black lotus for that and as you just said if there is ever a, a lag spike or you know some vibe happens or about to happen people all press the patchy flask that's another black lotus and after that you recovered you lost your flask of the titans you use patchy flask so <laughs> You're gonna need to use another Flask of the Titans. So that's at least uh, 3 times 40, 120, 120 Black Lotus per raid if just one accident occurs. How do you think you'll manage this in a 40 man raid? Because um, this sounds like a lot of farming without the access to the auction house. Yeah, the farming is a big issue. The Lotus. Honestly, like if I play a lot, I can probably get reliably like five to ten lotus a day, and mm -hmm. that's just me, right? And other people can do the same thing if they want to. So the lotus is indeed a bottleneck. Uh, the more people who have on hardcore, the harder it will get to farm them, right? Because they'll probably yes. bunch up to the same zones. Like burning steps, exactly. you can't really get a lotus at this point, right? Because there's always like ten people running around. But the the slighter, the, the lesser populated zones, it's quite it's not terrible to get a lotus but if you're not a hunter or a xiaomi with farsight it's hard to get them reliably especially in a row right if you mm -hmm. have the timer then often you get like two three in a row in, in the in like other zones but i think it's gonna it's an issue especially because they they did a small buff to the lotus right since it can drop from um 
herbs like Grums or not a plague bloom and up, I think, or dream foil. Uh, I believe it's a one or two percent drop rate on half dream foil right? or half. It, it's yeah. just a very small percentage on dream foil, mountain silver sage, Grums blood, basically any flower that's um, still yellow to you at uh, max level 300. Yeah, so that's a small buff, so you randomly get one here or two there, but it's it's so minor that that it doesn't really change much. And all the other herbs, they change the spawn time from like 45 minutes to like 25 or whatever it is now. So the, the, the other herbs spawn a lot quicker and the lotus is still an hour, which makes it pretty much the same drop or the same like lotus per server as it was before with like an 8k pop server, it's just too low. Um, mm -hmm. So there have to there has to be some change in some way. Either you can make it that certain professions can make a Lotus on a four day cooldown, like lock behind a red faction, right? So you can't have like 10 alts creating Lotus on cooldown every day. Something like Scenario and Circle Exalted? Yeah, exa exactly. Or Revert, it doesn't have to be Exalted, but Revert is a big enough, enough time investment and it, that's locked behind. The Raptor is are locked behind uh, level 58 or something, so you can't have with 35 alts. Um, and if someone wants to level 5 charges to 60 and buy the rep or farm the rep to get a Lotus, then they should be able to. But I think you need some kind of cooldown for the Lotus, or you have to um, increase the drop chance from all herbs. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's just higher. I th I'm not sure what Fell Lotus in TBC uh, was. Or you can do the same as in TBC that you get tokens from certain raids that you can turn into Flask, right? If you know the, oh, the yeah. mark of the Illidarian TBC. Something like oh. that. Because I, I think it's just, if you raid, you either get the return of the Flask that you put in, or partially, right? You don't need like 40 Flasks for every raid. But a few would help out, especially s smaller guilds and progression guilds. That, um, but yeah, it, it's hard, the resources... Uh, Especially since you can't buy it, and if you only have one character and it's not an herbalist, then how do you get your consumables? So either I have to farm it for you both, or you have to level an alt just to herb stuff. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, you're still hardcore at the end of the day. You know, like something happens, um, whether it's out of your control or not, something malicious, like someone pulls a bunch of mobs on you. Say you spend five hours farming herbs, you're about to hearthstone, and some guy just griefs you and kills you and not only did you lose you know your character you lost five hours of work and your guild lost a dedicated herbalist yeah that's it's... i think if if you're experienced you won't really die that often i don't think you die that often while herbing or mining unless you're in like spots like if you're herbing on a warrior right that's mm -hmm. dangerous as hell but as a hunter it's kind of safe it's similar with rogues and uh, other classes with good escape abilities but yeah, it's indeed like it takes a decent player like three or four days, five days to get to 60 probably on softcore. The hardcore probably takes people longer. And then all the herbing, it's indeed risky. But a lot of people have bank characters, right, just for that. So their main either doesn't have all their uh, valuable stuff. Um, so let's say all the Lotus I have are on a bank character with all the Arcanide and Mooncloth and all that stuff. Just in case my warrior dies, then we don't lose like a month or three months of progress um, material-wise. That's the thing I did notice too, like only told me, uh, some guys have been like leveling bank golds just to use them as bank golds. So you have like a bank gold that's level 54 and one that's 49 and so on. Oh yeah, yeah that's uh, the... I was going to ask that it's um I don't think it's a secret to anyone that uh, the trading restriction on hardcore is um, not really a restriction, it's more just a... Um way nuance. to make it more difficult and nuance as you said exactly it's uh, if you're level 59 you can trade with the guy who's 54 who can trade with the guy who's 49 all the way back to level 5 or level 1 it's a uh, i understand why they put it in the game but um you know like would you personally like to see this removed or some alternative change to this um what you want preferably is like an item that drops for level 50 you can trade it to it's like level locked right only a 45 mm -hmm. can accept it and a level 55 can accept it or higher is always possible maybe that's the best way but that's i don't think that's possible at least with the because they have to change the whole code 
And I think if you remove it, it ruins the trading uh, for everyone, which is also not good. I think the people who have a trade chain, I have one, for example, and a few others have one as well. Most of them just use it as storage. And mm -hmm. I think I traded one guy down, like he had a main in like level 60 or 59 mage, and he wants this priest alt of like level 30 some gear. I traded him some gear down, right? But mm -hmm. I don't do that often because it just ruins like the leveling for hardcore. And I think it, the moment you start twinking out full characters with full gear, like I can understand if you buy an, an item, like uh, a good plate helm from a 55 and you want to buy it and you're like 45, I'll trade it. I'll like, I'll trade it down to you. Right. I'm, I don't mind mm -hmm. that. Like full twinking. I think that's bad, especially like if it's your first or second character. Like if you if you have ten characters deep, it doesn't really matter because you won't die anyway because you know the game. It yep. just then you just want to play it differently, right? You want to mm -hmm. play a AOE mage, or you want to play uh, I just or solo dungeons, whatever you want to do. And you need some other stuff for that, then sure, go ahead. But I think I I think you can't change it since it's now a part of the turtle hardcore version, the trading and the grouping. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they can change it in a good way. Um, don't you, because I know you're one of you guys, I, I know this from only, um, guy in your guild, guy in Tepsi also, Shannon to only, um, he told me that one of the big requests for you guys is hardcores, uh, getting access to the guild bank. Yeah, uh, that wouldn't that, that create a similar situation where like you could invite a level 10 hardcore guy and he could just take stuff out from the guild bank? Um, yeah, that would. Uh, but that's why they have the requirement. I think you can only uh, enter the hardcore guild bank at 60. I think that's oh. what the topic either says, or he said it on Discord, or maybe just in our in our Discord. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the way he phrased it, or read it, or I read it, was that you need to have the permanent hardcore option that you get at level 60, or maybe if you complete the chain at 55, maybe if they don't uh, write it properly, right, that you mm -hmm. you get the permanent hardcore before you hit 60. So maybe you can at 55, when you can start the chain, you still have to do the whole chain. I think on partisan Uber is. So before 450, 859, I don't think you complete the challenge at all. Mm -hmm. um, but those people, if if it works correctly, it's only level 60 permanent hardcores who can uh, open the guild bank. If they do it wrong, then it's from the moment you complete the permanent hardcore chain. And then it could be 55. But again, that's like that. that's not bigger than the trading from 60 to 55 so i don't think there's gonna be an issue unless there's bugs but can't really uh, think too much about that yeah because the forum posts that say you just need the title of reaching inferno which is like hardcore 60 before you can access and use the guild bank so it makes sense that way do you yeah, think yeah, something yeah. similar like an auction house with like similar restrictions could work out for hardcore or what's your thoughts on that um, I didn't think about that, but like we're now, we're since we're talking about it, I think that might be the way that uh, at 60 or when you have the Inferno Tents, you can um, use the auction house and maybe the mailing system as well. Mm. Uh, maybe you don't even need to do the auction house, just the mailing system to be workable. But I think that's harder since, um, uh, well, it's since they can, uh, the Gale Bank is an object as well. Maybe the mailing box could be work, but you can already interact with the mailing. I'm not sure how they, that works. It should be a decent solution that only the um, 55 plus or with the title or only 60 can use the auction house. But again, I don't think that changes that much because if it's only 60, then you don't get the materials out of the people that leave hardcore to start normal, right? Since let's say a guy levels to one to 60, farm some Grom spots and Black Loads, and before he leaves Hardcore, he puts it on the Auction House for us. He can't, right, since he needs to be 60, so it wouldn't impact us a lot. It, I think either you need full Auction House or no Auction House, because it doesn't change much for Hardcore. I was going to ask, this may be a bit of a controversial topic, um, but um, the in-game store, how you can buy your Hardcore character, repair bot, and the auction house and the extra back sizes do you um do you as a hardcore you know dedicated hardcore raider do you like that as a thing in the game or do you dislike it and if so why um i don't it, it changes a little bit money wise right you since you can fender 20 percent if you have it 
you have a little bit more gold, pr probably, especially the early levels when you have very little back slots. Um, it doesn't change the game that much. It makes some people like enjoy all the extra stuff and saving extra stuff. Back space is a little, like limited on Turtle since um, just as well as an official, but so it doesn't really matter that much. But especially for hardcore, if you save all the stuff. But since you can trade here, it's less of an issue here since you don't need to save. Um, some leather that you like three rock leather for your one craft you can always trade it from someone so you don't need to save all that stuff from level 20 till maybe you have to use level four so it do doesn't impact the leveling whatsoever or the challenge just makes it slightly easier um, and the cosmetic stuff doesn't impact it whatsoever but again we prefer that and i think for certain boats like they want to play a melee hunter and they want to look like a worgen go for it that's that's part of turtle right i i don't uh, don't dislike it. I personally don't use it myself, but I can understand people do that. Especially for the bags and like some of the bots, maybe just a vendor bot. Yeah, it, a lot of people in the hardcore archers do have a vendor bot. So often in a dungeon, you have a vendor bot, someone with a vendor bot available or bank. Uh, more so on the lines, because I think we have slightly, I think we probably like 70% alliance in this build. Okay. So on the lines, probably someone has a bank or a vendor. I completely understand that too. It's it's just so like nice to have, like any level really. It's just funny. Always the people with the extra bags and the vendor bots are always the people just saying, "Wait, I have to vend or do this or that," because I just I don't know. They don't manage the bags. I find it always funny. People with like three of those max slot bags are always have their bags full of, uh, of stuff. I just I find that hilarious. To be fair. <laughs> yeah. Hmm, what else is there to talk about? Um, I would like to go back to the, um... Because uh, we, we did touch it, we, you did, uh, you know, explain your reasoning about the open world urbing and the, um, DBC, like, get your flask back from raiding. I'm uh, not sure if you saw the first uh, podcast we did, um, but we did talk about uh, consumables on Turtle Bow, and something I want to... Uh, emphasize about here is that the game is very shortly going to get two more raids and the consumables for each raid is going to be you know increased because obviously it's a new raid people don't yet understand everything there will be mistakes and those will have to be either you know paid for in repairs or by people using extra consumables so in the future we're probably going to see a lot more people contesting open world herbs and not just the hardcore players, but the non-hardcore players who are the vast majority right now. And with the extra, you know, incentive for people to level hardcore characters, I myself started to level one in hopes of getting invited to hard chores. Um, do you have any suggestions to maybe uh, further change the open world herbing and nodes, mining nodes? to make it more sustainable for a server that's awake 24-7 with people all over the globe to make it so that you don't have to, you know, the, the auction house doesn't get hyperinflated or anything else. Um, well, that's part of the vanilla thing. I think you can go as hard on consumables as you like. Um, the, I don't know, it's, it's rough since certain consumables are required um, for software, slightly, like there's a lot of ga casual guilds, right? They just rage, you don't need flask and all that stuff for, let's say, a Blackwing lair. Just the tanks might use it just to make it smoother. Mm -hmm. But most pop won't pop a mongoose or at least not pop rage pots on cooldown and stuff like that, which is the big expensive stuff. You, you can, you can, I don't think there's a good fix for that. Or you do like Guardian Battle Elixir, right? And, or Flask, and you can have one of those, like either Flask and a Battle, or like a Flask and a Battle or Guard and Guardian. So you have either, but then you just do Mongoose and HP Pot, and you don't need all the, the smaller stuff like the Juju and all that stuff. And it makes it less, but I think that's part of vanilla that you can go as hard as you want. If it's not mm -hmm. like, if it's not required to, uh, consistently clear the raids in a reasonable time. I don't think you want to change too much. Um, you, you, there's all the other ways that, again, it's the same with the tokens from raids. Let's say they give flasks or um, certain world bosses dropping lotus. Let's say 
So you make mm. the dragons more farmable for people. Like, oh yeah, well let's do the dragons and drop ten lotus and we roll those off at the end, or or just any herb, especially since it's AQ, it's bugs anyway, right? And mm. but uh, I, I think that's part of, of classic. The other consumables and the if the price go up, you just have to increase spawn rates or locations or something or new zones that have more. But all the new zones have high um, spawn rates or static spawn rates. So that's farmable. That's pretty farmable for most stuff. I think Grom's Blood is the biggest issue in Lotus since those are in no new zones. I see. Yeah, um, I remember. Um, I, I feel like this is a bit of a derail. So I'll go on a tangent here while we think of the other topics. Uh, uh, I am i don't know if you were around or if you remember, but when Lapidus Isle came out or the no sorry Telabim came out uh, the zone was bugged in that every single node on it had a five minute respawn time and for about one day people went crazy on this on that island uh I saw Dragunovi myself run between four rich Torium vein spawns and just pick them up as soon as they appeared and you know alias being the most gentle soul of Traveler had to report it, which got fixed immediately on the next restart. But um, I had an idea of something like a treasure island or some sort that opens like certain days on a month where people can go and just pick up herbs and nodes, something like that. It would fit the flavor. Would that uh, be something? Well, the, with custom I islands and all that stuff, the, the issue is that you can always abuse it. So let's say oh, yeah. if the the biggest thing with those kind of islands is you just place a lock with two summoners there. You can either oh, always get there, first. or the moment you lock, the moment it starts, you have like a ten minute head start. Mm -hmm. I think all those kind of things are um, are f like fun ideas, which you have to figure it out properly. And the telebim bug, I think it was also with. The Gilmas Islands, they all had five minute respawn timers for months. You can, mm -hmm. I think, the Grom's Blood or the, the Ghost Mushrooms in those caves are still five minutes. So you can get like six, there's like four or five spawns in one cave. So you can yeah. pretty much farm that permanently. It had the small Torium nodes. I think all those custom zones of five minute timers, you have the, the Tin Cave in Silver Pine or the, the zone above it, right? All those thin nodes spawn in a five minute timer. Get the same with silver. So all those custom zones, all the times are wrong. They, I think they are aware. They just don't change it. They change the the rich storm to forty five minutes, but you can still camp it. I did that. Got like hundred arcane crystals in like three days, but just camping it because oh you have God. all the timers. They can't do shit, right? It's they they must be aware of it. I, I felt like maybe this is conspiracy theory, but that they make the timers as bugged as possible at the start. So everyone goes to the zones and <laughs> the zones look crowded or they legit didn't learn from the last three custom zones they made, which I think is more baffling. Um, because all the, all those, all the nodes, like I'm my hunter, I'm herbing and mining. So I get nine rich thorium, 10 small thorium veins, like 10 uh, Mount of Silver Sage veins and 10 Dreamful um, nodes in one route that takes like 12 ish minutes. And then I wait the 45 minutes and do it again. And you just do that for like whatever you just have to play like every 10 minutes every 45 right mm -hmm. and that's i think that's just they don't have like pools of spawns right let's say in burning steps you have all the rich storing around the castle they're all like grouped right so only one will pop up or maximum two or three but on those islands every node has its own spawn timer which is i think wrong since then it's campable and if it's campable it's controllable mm -hmm. i think that's it's good if you have a really populated server where people will fight over the spawns, but it's bad on like this kind of server because if you don't know, then not a PvP server. Also, it's just uh, easy to get monopoly on stuff if you just have more people. Yeah, exactly. So, actually, speaking of Telebim, real quick, there there was also like it's it's not related to hardcore or anything, but there was a bug with like these certain pets. You could tame in Telebim that had the troll model. I'm just gonna throw a quick screenshot up of that. It's kind of funny. So I had one myself and then just removed it because a lot of people got it. But <laughs> oh, <Yeah. laughs> troll fin. 
But so on the topic of consumables now, um, something like tea with sugar, is that capped at level 60 or how does that one work? Uh, sorry, can you repeat it? I didn't hear that quite clear. Sorry, uh, tea with sugar, is that capped at level 60 or how is yeah, that right now? Yeah, it is. It's like we have it on a list with all the stuff we can get uh, when 60 it. So the quest itself, I think the two pre quests are just normal quest and then the tea with sugar is 60 required. Same like uh, Mage Water, the quest is also 60. The mage tables also 60, um, mounts obviously, um, and a lot of rep gear is also 60, like Raven Tusk and um, mm -hmm. the Lion's uh, counterpart. I'm not sure what it's called anymore. The, the high elf? Uh, the, the high elf one, yeah. That's also all 60. Okay. I feel like getting oh. access to all of that soon is going to be really nice, because like a lot of the gear you get from rep is like really good, actually. It's I'm sure you of, have... Uh... over tuned, right? I'm sure you have a lot of people who are already exalted with those and like they're ready to buy the rep token on day one once they get to 60. Yeah, sure. Uh, not everyone, but the players who are around longer. I don't, like you only need Raven Tusk reverted, I think, revert mm -hmm. and exalt this amount. So, especially that's not too hard. But I think uh, most people have it since the gear is either really good. Like for warriors and rats, it's really good. For rogues, it's good. Hunters, it's good. For the most healers, it's not that great since it's like no stem. It's int MP5 and damage, right? Mm. But it, all those rep stuff is good uh, addition. Same with all the still the stuff opens as well with 60, right? Since you can't equip the sets to summon mobs uh, till 60. And all the um, jukes and uh, the lords, which is another big plot, uh, gameplay uh, stuff we uh, get when we get 60. What about other reputations such as like the Centaurs and Deathless or maybe even Thunderbluff and Night Elf uh, rep gear? Uh, well, Thunderbluff is like the only thing that's really good exalted is the two-handed mace skill, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But I think most people who want two-handed mace are usually paladins and are all play human anyway. I think True. the most... I, I think the most of the... Um, Major city factions, right? Thunderbolt, no Grimmer, are, aren't, don't have anything good. Um, the Tesla's faction, I think we have one or two guys with Exalted, but either for the enchants, right? Um, and a lot of people have Exalted just from getting the axe, right? It's it's a really strong weapon for leveling. It's probably pissed for a while at uh, 59, 50, uh, or 60 even, till you get like raid drops or really good uh, two enders. And mm. I think. A lot of the faction, right? Like, uh, Torin Brotherhood opens as well at 60 because you can get till 100, and then you need turn ins inside the instance. And there are, those quests are all 60, so you can't turn in Dark Iron War, Lava Course, Fiery Course, and stuff like that till 60. Yeah, because I think I remember seeing a screenshot someone posted in the Hard Tours uh, Discord, like a screenshot of a bank called with like 500 Dark, Ar Dark Iron Ores and whatnot, and like um, Arcanite Bars yeah. and all that. That, that's that's my character. I think it has like 2400 Dark Iron Ore and like oh 30 Mount Blood of the Mountain. I think I, I, had, I had like another 1k before, but I made those into bars for um, mm. people doing the quest. So we, uh, we should have the character when the moment we had 60, like we have a guy that has an armor smith plus enchanting, right? So you get the enchanting patterns and all the armor smith stuff to uh, revert instantly if we want to. Um, but the other stuff, that's a lot of work, right? So to minimize all the trash farming we have to do in MC, um, we can skip that part at least for the most important stuff. How prepared but do yeah, you guys I, think you are for Molten Core? Sorry for interrupted. So for for example, like fire resistance gear, do you guys use annihilators, all that? Maybe even Nightfall once you guys hit 60? Um, if, if I look at it and if I... Like, I check the drop rate of all that stuff in MC, right? So, and how many mobs there are in MC run uh, with a full clear. I think you get, like, an average about 2.5k rep worth of drops, or maybe a little bit more, if you kill everything, including bosses. And, and Nightfall is around 40k rep, no, or no, 33k, since you can get 100 uh, without doing anything. So you need, like, if you're a human and save all the quests, it's 30k rep. So that takes almost, like, 8 nine runs full runs to get just nightfall pattern so with that drop i don't think we're gonna get nightfall before we clear mold uh, mc or black one layer to be fair maybe before we clear black one layer but 
all that stuff is so locked behind the drop rate, and you also need all that stuff to craft tank, uh, tanks, fire resist gear. Um, and then after that, you can have like four hound belts for the healers and stuff. It's just, there's so much rep, um, so many um, specializations, like uh, all the leather work specialization have one or two items. So it's it's probably going to be bank all characters, right? That will get the rep. So mm -hmm. they don't ever die. And then you'll double up, like, let's say an X Smith plus a leather worker or uh, a May Smith plus uh, a tailor. So you always knock out two professions at once. But I think it's just so much rep to grind. And if you want to minimize uh, trash farms, then you'll skip most of them. Are you guys planning on doing uh, next trash farms? Speaking of trash, or. Um, we haven't talked about it to be fair. Um, it should be easily doable now. I mean, if you just have good hunters and warlocks. Yeah. So yeah, that well, there you sum it up, right? You, you need good hunters, good warlocks. I think warlock hunter is one of the most famous classes for not be, for <laughs> having bad players. <laughs> so, if you want to trust someone else to guide those mobs perfectly on your hardcore character. Um, I'm not sure about the drop chance from the trash. I think they were increased, or maybe I misread something. They That's are a bit increased, yes, but they are still, you know, rare as ever. Yeah, so those items will be good. I think at some point we'll probably do it, but you need everyone with rep. Then you need to invest the arcane crystals and the next crystals to every player that you want to farm rep with. Well, if um, you're, you know, exalted, it's free, right? So only the revered and people under that need to. Things. Exactly, but then even then, I think it's quite risky, especially with sometimes the lag spikes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it, definitely. If someone got, you, you can't exit, so if something goes wrong, it's a battery flask you have to spend. Um, the drops like the weapons are good. The rest is kind of useless, like relatively right. But I think at some point we'll do it. But I don't think before we clear MC, we'll be in next farming trash. Unless you have a lot of priests that can shackle all the mobs, so you don't have to guide that much. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. even then, like, how many epics do you get per hour? Like, I think you only kill like three packs before you reset. Like the three. Yeah, and it? because you can die, you have to hearthstone or portal out. Exactly. So yeah, I don't think you get camp out of raids, from, can you? You can like get kicked after you. Like you camp, you get kicked, and when you relog, you should be outside. But even then, the leader will have to. Yeah. Well, you can always like the leader can always pull the storm. Oh yeah, of get course. Contract. There's ways around it, but it's just a lot of hassle for. I think don't I don't think the gear, uh, the time invested to get everyone online once per week, uh, for just that because you don't have that many players, right? You don't have like eighty players, and you don't want to do it with like ten. So you want to do it with like 20 to 30 just to be safe and kill shit quick. So, And then not everyone can be online multiple times per week. So if you're also doing MC or SEG and AQ20 and you need people like three, four nights a week online to do just all that stuff, then you have to pick priorities. And I don't think Trash Farm is like, it may be doable for a few weeks, but then people just CBA coming for that because it's yeah, not yeah, fun exactly. for and any caster just does, doesn't get anything. All the healers they are get just... the stamina rope. That's very good for hardcore now. <laughs> Can it drop from those though? I think so. I saw okay. it drop from those. Uh, it, it's but yeah, it's the reward for most class is just poor. Oh yeah. And you have to have everyone online, so you have to give up your real lifetime just to be there. And I think, I think you have, the... if you have too many things, uh, too many dates, that you have to be there. It's just not smart. But it's definitely doable. I think one of the biggest things you guys are probably gonna farm is maybe have like a rogue do these like cover runs in AQ. That could probably be quite helpful. Um, Which, it's definitely a future goal though. But. Uh, yeah, the, the trash from AQ40, like the, the mana burn mobs, is definitely on the list uh, at some point when we start doing AQ40s and actually get tokens, right? Mm -hmm. And the moment you, like, let's say we know we're gonna do AQ40 in like, let's say a month. Then we can do a few trash runs of those mobs, right? Get a few keys, and then after we kill it, you can keep forming the same coffers. Um, but yeah, it. I don't think the the idols are super big, or will be the like the 
the roadblock to getting turning in your tokens. Just you need the rep as well, right? So you need to clear a little bit to even get be able to turn them in. I think the biggest road gap for AQ is probably a twin M's getting a warlock or a priest like geared up to actually take that. It's gonna take a while, I feel like. No, I honestly I don't fear that that much. I think the rough part is well the first those first Anubis sets, if you get a shitty a shitty ability combination, right? They're quite rough. Oh yeah. And Satura, since he's not tauntable during spin, is really They fixed rough. that actually. You can do okay. it now. Okay, so that makes it a lot easier since you can keep him in his place. Um and I think Uru is still bugged, I assume. Or is just still a mess. It's, uh, yeah. So it's just imagine so if messed. one hardcore player runs into early, like some famous people uh, you raid with still, that can't <laughs> hold their horses. Um, but yeah, if you if you see a high elf run into early and he turns and breaks the whole raid and you die, then you won't be having a good time. Especially since you get stunned and you will probably someone will die. And since that's kind of buggy, you don't need to do Uru. But I think all the trash before that is not free either. It's still rough. So I think all those, the whole AQ40 is really rough comparatively oh, to, yeah. uh, to classic. Imagine someone messing up the trash skip. Oof. I don't think you'll do the trash skip to be fair. Speaking you of AQ40, uh, there is a hardcore guild in classic that actually killed Cthulhu. Yeah, I saw that as well. I, have the video uh, I was right going now. to ask, how holy do you, shit, holy do you shit, holy think shit. you could do what they did on Turtle without holy the roll buffs? No, buttons on Let's do it. Uh, holy shit. no, mainly because their damage will be like twice or three times as high. Mm -hmm. um, like like we're watching the video of Cthulhu running, right? Yeah, I think he does like eight, 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 three, four beams on one target, and then he still stands still for like 10 seconds. Yep. Like, and on, on Turtle, he will do 3-4 beams on the guy who targets first, and then he starts beaming everyone. They have like 20 seconds to be able to run in position, and we will have like 9 or 10, which you can't totally spread out perfectly. Um, so yeah, I, th I think that's... And most of the stuff, cooldowns on trash, like spin abilities, is a lot worse here. Silence abilities, mobs use their abilities way more and all sync, right? All at the exact same time. So they all mm -hmm. four will spin the exact same global, all the silences or all the bursts will happen. So is AQ40 doable on Turtle? For sure. Is it going to be rougher without buffs? Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, I think it's not impossible. You just have to double check a lot of the timers and see if there are some. A smart way to deal with certain stuff that they might not had to do or maybe they were aware of but they didn't since they could just suck it down but i think i was gonna suggest what... you can on turtle you can just have like the first person pool and then have all the paladins run in together stacked and they just divine shield on top of each other to pay that a few beams um that would mean there's a bigger chance that they'll hit the paladins right yeah, but with Divine Shield, they can take damage from it. Yeah, they won't die, but the rest can spread out easier. Yeah, that's it's an option. I think um, the issue is, though, I think the, the beam should go through Divine Shield, though, shouldn't it not? It or... doesn't. Nope. Okay, then I misremember that. But yeah, it, it, that's definitely an option. The issue is, though, when Divine Shield... So you run in all the Palin stack, um, and then if... If it happens, the beam hits them. They have to start spreading out pretty early because mm -hmm. if if they get hit while the beam, like while they're spreading out, it's still death. Either you run in, you either go with thirty since the rates scale right on turtle still. You so you have way less to spread, or you go and uh, you just double stack everything so you're always with two. Since with with flask and with shadow pot pot, you won't die in one hit or one bounce. So you just. For the running, you just have to get a little bit smarter. Which, but I think the running is people like, yeah, if people peek, you die. That's that's. But even then, if one guy peeks, he doesn't instantly fire a beam. So if you if you're not AFK at the doorway, you can still press a battery and you won't wipe. It just, 
I don't know. I wouldn't be want to be a melee on that fight, and one melee gets knocked and like five people die. But again, you yeah. can still patch it if if you see the beams on you. I'm just not sure. Well, but that's like with all the mechanics, you have to test on certain stuff. What happens when he casts battery on you, or when he casts beam on you? If you battery, does it go through and still bounce? Does he swap target? Does he do nothing for a second? Or what? What's the mechanic? How it works? Because if you know that, then you can legit just battery the first three beams that are on different players. I was going to ask, not. like, are you are you going to ask people to have a non-hardcore character they can no, bring to no, like no, no, some? No. No, never. Whatever guilds run in practice. That's like fucking PTRing. We're not requiring that because it's just ruining the game for most of the stuff. We have people with characters. I have a character, right? Only as a character. A lot of people have a normal character here. Uh, I can always try to get in a, in a normal raid and just test the mechanic or ask someone, hey, can you just test if the beam hits you? Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I'll, I'll pay you the flask uh, materials, whatever. Like, that's not. We, you do want to test certain mechanics, but most of the stuff, since I've rated here, I know what, what happens. So, But those interactions with, let's say, the Beam and Petri, how do they work? I don't know 100%, to be sure. I think nobody does, because nobody's actually tried that, I believe. Because, like, other <laughs> raiders haven't been hardcore, so nobody uses flasks of Petri normally. Exactly. But yeah, that's that's the fun part, right? You have to figure stuff out. It's, it's a challenge, like it's learning when new raids come out, you have to learn all the new fights. And that's for the normal people, right? For hardcore, it's, you know the fight, but you just want to know everything about the fight and not just... But yeah, I feel like overall just being a melee in AQ is gonna suck. Just, it's always been <laughs> like that, I feel like. Yeah, um, I think the biggest part for a melee in AQ is war was just terrible, right? Uh, oh yeah. So Tura is not it's not friendly for melee either, and the trash isn't that friendly to melee either. And Cthune, if you're geared, it's fine, right? But if you're not geared, you just get kicked to the curb on the your oh, yeah. wall. I can, also I can see you guys losing a lot of people to uh, the Blackwing Glare trash after suppression room, like the warlocks doing double rain of fire. Yeah, the, the warlocks are definitely. Uh, Dangerous. I think you can heal through most of it though, if you just. Because when I see Black Lairs, when sometimes I watch the stream or when we raid it, like everyone's bunched up on one spot. So everyone has to move and all your healers have to move, which is the biggest issue. Like if you're a healer and you stand off to the side, if you get Rain of Fire, that means the whole raid doesn't get Rain of Fire. So that's a win, right? And then you can move. And if there's two Rain of Fires and the rest of the melee, all the healers are safe, but it's mainly positioning that makes it way harder. And don't forget, we'll all have a GFPP pop for pretty much every trash bag. So the first yeah. Rain of Fire, I think a Rain of Fire does like 3k damage total, or maybe it's like 4k. So if you have two on it, it's 8k damage where you absorb 3k. And then with Flask, you have more than 5k. So that means you can't die even if there's two Rain of Fires and you just know, I can't die to this. I just can't stand in it. And then you kill one of them before the second Rain of Fire. And then you have to trust the healers to do a little bit of healing. It's... If you just overstack consumables, a lot of stuff just and position properly, you can survive so much more than people think. Actually, I feel like the goblin packs and maybe even the fairy could be a bit tough. Also, as hardcore, you have to tr you have to have a good mage or a good druid or any guy who's gonna guide those techies to have a, a good clue about what he's doing. Yeah, and yeah. if he's not, then you either he dies and everyone petries. Or everyone dies pretty much that's stacked on the second ice threat. But yeah, yeah because it's really well. scary if like it goes wrong. Yeah, if it goes wrong, you you enslave people dead because it just does so much damage. Yeah. I feel like something like even the bug like the big bug packs in AQ could like if you bob a mage or like forget to bob a mage when they start AoEing, you could probably lose one there too. Uh oh you mean those specs after what is it? Uh uh Scarum. Or yeah. Before, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Those big backpacks are easy. They're really easy. You can't really die on that. Like, unless you're like have idiots. Yeah, I've seen people you, die, but can... I guess they're idiots. <laughs> yeah, if you pull them one by one, like the only way you can die is fall damage. I'm not sure how the fall damage will work, but right, we don't have fall damage at this point. Maybe they give it to hardcore 60, but I think because it's the uh, engine issue that bugs the fall damage sometimes, they can't really add it because then you can just randomly die in the world. 
Mm-hmm. So we'll probably have fall damage reduction. But those bugs are not an issue whatsoever. Like I didn't even think about I didn't even worry a second about those bugs. You just do them really slowly. I mean the ones that split into like a thousand. Oh yeah, but you can also kill those one by one. And if you want to do it really smartly, you can do AOE lift down rotations. You can have paladins stand out of the group and spam Blessing of Kings, right, for threat, while there's a slow trap, so before they reach them, someone else can taunt. Uh, you, you can you can do so many things. You can have a paladin tank just for that. Um, the damage is kind of high, but again, they don't hit that hard. They just hit it often, right? So with Sacrifice, you can absorb a lot of damage. And with the Paladin Spirit Link, you can absorb a lot of damage. I think those those are like those packs are like my least worry about AQ40. Oh, okay. You know, we're talking about the difficult parts of raiding, but we are forgetting the most difficult part about hardcore raiding, which is the attendance and meeting the you know required classes for raids and all that. Because I'm sure that um, you know, uh, Zuma, you can do like the last picture I sent you. Yep. Show one, show that one. Um, I know that uh, people, you know, aren't a big fan of casters in hard chores. I've been told that you guys are always looking for them. Um, do you? I I can imagine multiple reasons why people would not want to play a major warlock in a hardcore raiding guild. Just the idea of playing a clotty that can pull aggro at any moment and die is. Uh, less than ideal for people investing, you know, hundreds of hours into that character. Um, how are you, what, what are your plans to, you know, not have everyone re-roll to a mage in Horchard? Um Yeah, class balance is rough for the... Um, I think mage is probably the safest class in hardcore. Just if you have if you have decent game knowledge, right? If you don't, then you can fuck up and die quickly, but with double blocks, blink, um, Nova, Cone of Cold, so you have so much um, tools to survive that it's probably one of the best classes besides like Holy Paladin standing in the back and never risking anything, right? Um, and melee is, in, is always in danger for pretty much everything because all the dangerous abilities are usually either full rate hits or it's just in the melee. It's never just ranged, it's either melee or everyone. So, I, and casters, I think most people when they hear about hardcore, they are oh, what's the hardest class to level? It's a warrior, probably, right? So they do it for the challenge and level war. So we get a lot of warriors. I think when we were playing softcore, we were always trying to recruit warriors. And here we have way too many warriors and way too many rogues often. Not in, mm. to the point that you have to like put 10 on the bench at this point, but relatively we have like three times or four times the warriors compared to mages and warlocks combined. It's just it's it's also a gear dependent class, so you have more to do, uh, more to farm. But uh, it's, um, I think warlocks and mages are going to be really strong in hardcore. Especially like if you have a tank that's not an idiot or if your self are not terrible, then as a warlock, you can just DPS. If you rip, you can always, um, what is it, a lip. And I think at the gear, like early gear level of MC and Black Mirror, your caustic gear isn't that great. That's, you have that much danger of ripping threat. And especially if you have like Trank Totem plus Salvation, if you ever rip threat, your tank is just legit AFK. And if then then there are bigger issues. But I think I don't think we have I think we had like one caster dead in the dungeon, and that's pretty much it was actually in UBS like last weekend or the week before. He just picked mm-hmm. a quarter and got like charged by five mobs, right? Charged oh. mobs in yeah, oh, and rip. like I stepped around the corner. And I think there's something with the server, right? It, it updates slowly, so you step around the corner. Exactly. You can see the mobs, but they don't see you. You step back, and you think I killed the mobs, so he thought the mobs were coming. He steps out, and they all target him, charge him, smack him, he's dead, right? This oh, happens no. a lot on Katoon during the pool, where Hunter, like, peeks out. He doesn't yeah. pull, but he thinks it... But the melee thinks it did, so the Hunter goes back in a second time, but people already saw the Hunter go in and out, so they think it's safe to go in, and it's a wipe. Yeah, I, I don't know why, how it works, so, but it's like, if you press an ability, it's also when you peek, nothing happens, you press shoot, they instantly see you. I think you have to mm-hmm. press an ability, it doesn't matter what. But you have to stand still, press an ability, and it will update your position. It was like similar or classic with patching, right? It's I think it's something similar that it doesn't update 
uh, every millisecond. It just updates when you do something. I think there's ways, probably, I have to test it more, but it's probably something like that. And you can avoid certain spots, but I don't know. Mage feels one of the safest. It's the strongest dungeon class. It's one of the strongest level or safest levelers. And um, it's a solid DPS. Um, and Warlocks is also really solid DPS and safe. It's just um, worse in dungeons than in Rage, right? Yeah, and you guys are going to get access to Bloodvine pretty soon as well. You guys just like start farming ZG, eventually get that. Yeah, I think for Warlocks, Bloodvine is a lot better option than for Mage since Warlocks have yeah. a decent HP pool. You don't want to be too squishes the Mage, especially without World Boss. We have to see how, how bad it is, but I think most um, MC, most of the fights are not really a damage check besides like one or two, right? It's just do the, do the fight properly and it should be fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, all that stuff comes available with CG. So back to the recruiting part for Hard Chores. Say if there's like someone watching this right now who wants to join Hard Chores, what class is it like? What specializations of uh, like say engineering or alchemy do you guys need the most right now? Um, I think um, profession wise, uh, like we said, the, the herbs are a big issue. If you want to rate, we either have to do like a the communist, everyone helps and everyone gets something, or everyone has to farm their own stuff. Um, but yeah, herbalist is always great. Uh, Mooncloth cooldowns are always great. Like, we don't need many, many alchemists for bars are always useful, right? But you don't need 10 alchemists. Uh, Mooncloth is harder to get, and uh, that kind of stuff. But cooldown, like, we don't need any armor smiths at this point or weapon smiths. We got the most of that done. Um, so just herbing and maybe tailoring pretty much exactly the cooldowns like we have a lot of stock right but when blood fight comes out and every cast needs 12 moon cloth to make the set and every uh healer wants the chest from let's say scenario in a circle uh rep it's an, or the, the new elemental set like the elemental set's like 12 20 highs or something and if every yeah. broken feral wants that then you run out quickly um, but yeah, the professions are not the biggest issue. I think classes wise, if you're an experienced tank, very welcome. Um, but yeah, if you never tanked in WoW or a classic and you're like, yeah, I'll start tanking in classic. Like if you're an experienced tank, you'll learn it quickly. If you're never tanked, I would not advise it because you got to learn all the pulls. So you'll end up DPSing early to see how we all do most of the pulls so you don't have to learn all that stuff and you have to get some decent gear then you have to feel comfortable in a decent pace right because if your tank is slow people just nod off and then i feel like it becomes more dangerous than almost when you're chain pulling yeah um, tank definitely needs the most experience for hardcore rating for sure i feel like yeah yeah that's without a doubt like yeah we can coach you a bit but you, you need you need to have confidence in your tanking ability and you need to be willing to learn the pulse. The pulse learning is not that hard if you know how to tank, but if you don't know how to tank, it's the roughest role. Either probably guys, the easiest role. Do you guys use prod paladins or uh, barret tanks, or is it just like prod warriors right now? At the moment, it's prod warriors. It's more to do with... Um, we have one druid who, is, who likes DPS mainly, uh, but doesn't mind helping out when we need an extra tank as bear. We don't have any prod paladins mainly because I just for half the dungeons they're slow you're either waiting for drinks they don't yeah. do enough threat because you probably like we can do dungeons as five or ten men right we can just fill it up and then you have like three warriors just cleaving everything down and you're just behind and then we have to wait for your mana because your mana is probably the biggest issue it's not the healers it's not the casters i don't know and most i just i think most people that play paladin tank are not the brightest players um I don't know, it's always the, the mainly because it's like a not meta spec. It just attracts different players. There's a yeah. few good ones, right? But on like if you're on hardcore and you, you're not you don't know how to tank, um and you play a play a paladin tank, it's one of the hardest as well, since you have like no defensive cooldown besides bubble. And you yeah. have no interrupt besides your hearts. Like warriors like three things. The druid is just way tankier than the paladin. Uh, as Bash as well, so like Paladin is the most squishy of them, 
like if you have an if you pull a pack and you do consecrate, like your threat will be fine. But if there's another pack that pulls and then shit goes down, like it's gonna be rough real quick. I just don't have too much faith in paladins to be fair. They're just low on stem very early with the gear. I can kind of agree on that. I'd only use a prop paladin for like some big AOE pulls where they can like do good AOE threat maybe. Exactly, and you don't have many pulls outside dungeons, and in dungeons you don't need it that much, and in raids the AOE pulls are so sketch that like you're not gonna have one paladin tank all the dragons off the veil, right? Oh, they hit not. so hard that no, you want like they hit so hard that you want one tank for each mob, and if like yeah, okay, suppression room. Even a holy paladin with with just some with some play gear can tank that, and same with like the buck tunnel in AQ40. I think only Neff might be one where it might be nice, but even then, there's multiple ways to deal with all the small heads. I think so, you can just slow pull those mostly. So basically, what you guys need the most is like casters and like cooldown based professions. Yeah, well, any professions is fine. It, those are the they help the most, but it's like a 10% difference, right? If you don't have it, you don't have it. It won't break, make or break. I want to play a mage and I want this, I want enchanting and theory. And we're like, oh no, we need Arcanite drop your enchanting. It's like, no, I don't want to play it. And it's just take enchanting. We'll be fine either way. Yeah. Well, I feel like herbalism is like going to be the biggest investment you can get as a hardcore. Because like everything you're going to spend money on or like stuff on is mainly going to be like flasks and consumables. Yeah, exactly. Especially since we have most of the base stuff covered, right? Like yeah. early, like an armor smith was bigger, but if you have one, the second one doesn't add value. That's just how the game pretty much works, right? Same with after you have one crusader, the second crusader encounter doesn't do much besides more availability. Yeah, exactly. Do you, are you guys short on healers, or what's the status on that? Uh, healers are always always welcome. Uh, I think we have a decent amount of healers, but uh, since like you have one healer or two healers per run maximum, you get geared really quickly compared to the eight or seven DPS you have in a run. So they often gear out quicker, and then they play an alt or make another healer or do something else. Right? Since after you get geared, and there's at the moment not extra content until we get sixty, you rotate through them relatively quicker than DPS. Yeah. Um, but that that's just always on when there's no content to be cleared. So but some classes, well. some classes you definitely don't need would be something like warrior, rogue, and hunter, right? Uh, hunters were always short on that. It's always surprises me since it's oh. like you can level a hunter in like two and a half days if you want to. It's so quick to level. Um, but yeah, we we have one hunter now who's new. We haven't I've done one dungeon with him, so I don't know if he's good or bad. And we had two, three other hunters that uh, get like it's often they get gear and then they just semi stop playing. But yeah, when we get 60, I've seen a lot of people that were gone for like five months suddenly pop up on the Discord again and are interested. So it's it's going to be rough to see what we actually have till we get the 60 patch and like two, three weeks in and see who's actually sticking around. Yeah, it is definitely a rough community to like recruit people who actually have to like the same mindset of wanting to raid us hardcores. Yeah, because most people that joined us didn't even know there was this on a turtle. So they... Um, they join, they're just leveling and either see us uh, looking for an extra player for dungeon, let's say a BRD is like a really easy way to step into the rating, right? Since it's super safe, we do the dungeon with like, you, you can do it with eight or nine people, so you can't really die unless you jump in the lava voluntarily, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's then they see it. Oh, they'll join and some some stick around. They they get some XP and they ding sixty in a dungeon with us or the day after and they like go to normal. Or some stay around and get some gear and then leave. Some know that we're doing this and they say, hey, I want to join. And they're like level twelve and they done like five times with level twenty. You're like, yeah. When you get <laughs> sixty mate, you'll be welcome. But like, it's so it's just it's hard because most people that do the challenge just do the challenge and then it's like an afterthought. It's very few people that start leveling hardcore just for the rating and then also make it right it's like that's yeah. a small percentage i know you guys definitely have like this i, I saw it when i made my own hardcore uh, a while back you guys have like this own chat you just join instead of joining the guild sometimes or yeah something like that 
Yeah, exactly. It's it. The guild is free for levelers and just people want to chat or just or only want to farm stuff. Everyone can do what they want, pretty much. And if you sign up, you sign up. If you don't sign up, you don't sign up, right? For the for the dungeon raids. Yeah. I feel like just having accessibility to like the still alive guild chat while it's still a guild would be pretty nice while leveling. If you don't want to have your brain rot away, then yes, you can definitely stay in still alive. Oh, I mean, like, just, it, say, like, you want to buy a certain mats for this quest or, like, uh, want to do, like, some of the lower level dungeons that you don't really, like, you're not really afraid of them. No, true. Uh, stay alive is a decent trading uh, um, part to it. I think most of the stuff you need for leveling and quests, you can either get relatively easy in, in cities and or you can rejoin stay alive for a few minutes uh, just to uh, do a want to buy uh, whatever fr frost oil for example yeah yeah because I was looking for an engineer when I was leveling just for the war song supplies thing and just get that uh, that gun you need for that quest yeah the, the blunder bluff or blunder dust or whatever it's called yeah 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 it looks yeah, like exactly. Tony's still away he said his do dog is barking. Uh, not sure when he'll be back. We could take some viewer questions while I wait, maybe. Yeah, sure. If anybody in the chat has any questions, you can ask right away. And we'll... I'm terribly sorry. I found a dog. I'm back. Oh, <laughs> welcome back. We're just going to do some viewer questions now that you hear them. Little fucker run outside. Um... Yeah, viewer questions. It could be anything. Doesn't need to be related to hardcore, just any like questions you guys have. Any questions to Chidi, to me, or to Zoomer? Look for like thirty we seconds. Time for chat to catch up, yeah. Can Chidi please come back to raid lead tab C Nax? Asks Milk. Milk Thief 5. No. <laughs> there you go. Just, just no. <laughs> well. I don't think that's good for anyone. <laughs> we definitely lost a lot of players. Like, we, Elman and Malrock aren't raiding with us anymore. Oh, that's, yeah. Sometimes I hear some things about who's still raiding and uh, who quit. Or who's taking a break, or uh, well, I guess. Technically, he didn't lose Malrock. He got kicked twice. <laughs> well, he just kind of stopped appearing, and then he got kicked. But yeah. Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. We have another question from Vindicath. Are there any specific changes to professions you guys would want for hardcore rating? Um. Mm. There's, I don't know, that's a rough one. There's some spots with gear that are just lacking um, in MC and Blackburn Lair, right, that you cannot fill up, especially for a hybrid classes. But I think that's a whole issue with chairs, gear, right, for, let's say, Elemental Shamis and Boomkins, that it's just hard to gear. But for leveling, there's a few items, like maybe shields to be added to crafting. Um, I think there's a good leather set, there's a good plate set, there's good... The cost is set is also pretty decent, so all the leveling gear is pretty good. I think maybe a few more ones for enchanting, just more options uh, for that to fill out. Since there's like an enchanting one from like level 5, like the 13, level 30, and that's it. Like a mid-level 40, 50 ones. And for leveling, they should, would be nice to add it. And for raiding, um, the patterns are really rough, right? Since Lionheart and Titanic and all that stuff is just lost bosses like Oni and Rag and world bosses to drop it. So all the hard patterns are really hard to get. And on Classic, you can get them from Eternium lockboxes and whatnot. And we probably can't mm -hmm. get them for a long while till we get lucky with like either an Onyxia or Rag drop. So patterns wise, the availability maybe for patterns. Uh, more options for patterns or since they're gonna change Lionheart and I think Titanic, right? To uh, less damage and more HP on it. So that's actually a good change for us. Yeah, they're removing uh, one hit from Lionheart Helmet and turning like the strength into like 32 attack power and giving it some stamina. I'm not sure about the Titanics, but 
Dragon obviously said he was gonna remove one hit as well and give it some stem. Yeah, so that's a good that's a change in our advantage because as a warrior, I think if you pre bis gear you have like three and a half K, four K HP in bis pre bis uh, when you're going MC, right? And you don't want that. Yeah, and you have like, like leather pieces also, like true strike shoulders. Yeah. True strike no stem, head no stem, and you have devil star almost no stem. Uh, you have like other pieces, rings that I have, have no stem besides like or like 15 AG and your weapons have it's just uh, that will help us but mainly crafted stuff for raiding either new patterns that require a lot of stuff that it takes a long time to grind right uh, that's fun usually for people to do it doesn't help normal players that much right since if you can go in CG you get a better item than let's say an item that requires 20 Arcanite bars it helps us but it doesn't help anyone else so I don't think we'll add that much maybe something similar to the elemental set for leatherworking but then for tailors or something. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I think I've I, I've seen rumors that the um the blood uh, bloodvine set is gonna get changed, or maybe they're adding a new uh cloth crafted set. Okay, yeah, that I think they were trying to nerf most of the items like similar to Titanic, right? They're too long, they're too strong for when you get them, and you have them for like half of the expansion. Or more. So if they make Bloodfly uh, weaker damage wise and more stats on it, or more expensive together, then it will help us out a bit. I think I'll get in touch on these pictures you sent to me while we were like uh, setting up the podcast. I feel like these are like memes and hard chores. Yeah, it's. It's uh, I, it's like. Uh, I think we all know, let's say for Baron, you know, the Baron fight in. Uh, what is the MC? It's always classic to just whisper someone, you got the bomb, and see them panic and run to the corner, right? I think that's one of the, the, the mo well-known pranks in Molten Core. Yeah. That most people have done once or twice in their life. It's similar to this. Like, there's always someone dying to Vinder, Elixir, and it's or Blood of the Hero. So someone made, like, for some 59er in a guild died because he was trying to loot it in uh, EPL, Blood of the Heroes or something, and died to it, and then got a little bit of annoyed, or he knew what... We have multiple deaths, like to Finner Licks, or not we, but the hardcore community. And it's just. And Petri's become kind of meta, right? Since everyone needs it. So it's yeah. like. Play on that as well. But it's, so, always, uh, it's always funny to see. Medicath has another question here. Are there any specs or classes that are more or less meta for hardcore rating, uh, rather th here than retail hardcore rating? Whether it be like class changes or like lack of world buffs, etc. Um, yeah, there are, uh, kind of meme, obviously, but not, not, well, it's known as a meme, but Red Tree Paladin was solid DPS compared to classic, um, mm -hmm. especially with, you have an, like, you have, what is it, Arcanite Champion, the sword, with like an, uh, like 200 strength or 120 strength proc, and is a good craftable weapon, so you have a good starting weapon, comparatively to all the warriors who, well, with Ra Raven Tusken, uh, the rep faction, you get decent one-handers, but before that, there's like no good one-handers. So you have a good, you're starting really strong. Uh, I think Hunter's stronger than here in all classics since uh, True Shot. So Hunters are a really strong range class. They do good damage, have threat of like faint death. Um, they're just really solid damage. Uh, Boomkin and Elemental are just in the same shit house as they are on classic, pretty much. The class changes haven't done anything pretty much for them. Next patch, 116.6 or something, they'll add more class change, but we don't know what it is, so I can't say if they're viable. Enhancement is still the the bottom dog of the game. Oh yeah, for pretty sure. Much not, it's, it's just shit damage. It's front-loaded damage, so annoying on threat. The only reason is like death totems, which, which yeah, that's elemental still does doesn't do terrible damage it's just compared to a mage like you have to compare all casters to a mage and they're just better than all of them pretty much utility wise that priest that or like uh, warlocks i mean that oh, yeah. pretty much shadow like improve priest, a lot uh, shadow, yeah, shadow priest, priest is like really good too especially for hardcore right the safety that's with the mm -hmm. aoe permanently on your group like if there's aoe damage your group is the least likely to die because it just always are topped off and will always get instantly some incoming healing. 
Um, and the mana regen is also uh, great and above the warlocks, which you, we hopefully have a few of. Yeah. Well, I feel like red paladins could be a really good like suitor for like using annihilator and stuff in the future as well, because they can proc the effect so fast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, annihilator is also X X specialization, right? It's the same as yeah. nightfall, or something. yeah, yeah. So you can get those both in one go. It's definitely annihilator is definitely a goal at some point, but it's all like that's fine tuning, right? When you're probably mid AQ, you have all that stuff done, and or like a year into, it's not like in the first few weeks you have a nightfall or annihilator. Yeah, exactly. So we have someone else here who's asking, what's the number one piece of advice for your leveling as hardcore? Um, just be over leveled for the zones. If you if you want if you your goal is to get sixty, over level the zones. So with rested XP, you're always still three levels above. Um, if it's mechanically not being zoomed in, so you can actually see what's going on. If a mob respawns on you, don't run away because there's probably mobs going to respawn near you. And you'll just run into three, three, two, three, th or four mobs. And often you can deal with the one mob that spawns on you. It's just people running away. It's often what kills them. And just yeah, I did notice some those. zones have like really uh, like fast respawn rates. Yeah, that's like Sorry. especially lower level zones are just like perma respawns every five seconds. And that's on prime time, you can just get killed by that, even if you play well. But like if you're two, three levels higher, then you can take on two, three mobs, right? And then it's it's only they respawn, but it's whatever, right? You just kill them. But the moment you have to start avoiding and using CC, you fall behind. And if they won, and then you delay the uh, delay, and then you're killing them as well, and then they can respawn again, and you just die to overwhelming mobs. I think Zaz in chat has a really good advice for leveling us hardcore too. He says just uh, don't die. If he follows that question, his own advice that would be welcome. Yeah. <laughs> you should have seen. You should have seen him last next Ramus. He died the most at like seven or eight deaths on a raid where if he had zero wipes. But he's not even following his own advice. Well, that's all software though, right? So <laughs> yeah. But I, I guess he's the new Momo then. Uh... I think he just hasn't DPS in a while, so he needs to get, you know, limit test a bit. It's I bet he won't die next raid. Surely not. I'll I'll I'll, t I'll take that bet. <laughs> um. Yeah. So to the guy who asked about advice, I personally what I found very useful is after you finish your, um, your race's starting zone, go and do another's. So like if you're a dwarf. Finish um, Coldridge Valley, and then run all the way to Iron Forge. Go to Elvin Forest, and do Northshire. Yeah, that's even just else. doing the daily know. quest, I feel like. So if you're Horde doing the Raven Tusk dailies, and like if you're melee too, you can do like the uh, what's it called, the Troll and Orc starting zones, and all those quests there just for the rep, and you can get the helmet and at level twenty five, which is really good. Yeah, exactly. I think the easier one is just. Uh, let's say the dwarf or human example just do like the first two three quests and let's say goldshire and then go the other way and do the first two three quests and you're probably level eight instead of level seven or six when you get to let's say the goblins and or the, the whatever spots you just always one or two levels above and i think the rep there's also on horde you have a lot of uh, the sticky glue right from the troll quests on uh, okay. the rotar you have the magic sand in uh, silver pine Ward has like a lot of those good items that Alliance lacks. Alliance is probably a rougher to level the early levels, I feel like. Since you have more annoying stuff to deal with than Ward, and Ward has more tools. Like Sticky Glue saves you all the way to 60, and same with Slumber Sand. And like, I don't know. I don't think Alliance is any of those free ones from Quest. You can get Magic Dust later, right, from uh, Westfall, which you have to kill mobs. And on, on Horde, you get that at like level eight, you get like five free ones and like ten glue, and you're set for the rest. <laughs> yeah, because I think well, uh, like humans, I got I was leveling a mage for a little while, but I stopped leveling him. You get like these twenty nades that do like fifty damage or something, and you get like I forgot what it's called, a uh, bag of marbles. I think just reduces chance on hit. It's not as good yeah, compared yeah. to 
uh, sticky glue. It's very exactly. good on um, patchwork. Yeah, exactly. I think most of the Lions players we have still have that. Or it's definitely uh, very nice to use. It's oh, just yeah, light uh, of the Loon too. At later, later yeah, levels. Like Loon, like, yeah, but I think most people just when they panic, they prop a, a health pot and then it's like, oh, I'm right, and then they just die oh, right yeah. in the backs. It's one of the common, like, oh shit, I had my light of a loon. It's never like, oh, this damage is incoming, I'll press light of a loon to absorb the damage. It's like, oh shit, I took damage, I'll heal. And then you're like, too late already. Yeah. Or do we have anything like extra to talk about? I feel like we went pretty much I in depth with ask, everything. Um... I wanted to ask, would hard chores be a guild that, like, uh, say, doesn't welcome people who are, um, I don't know how to say it without, you know, being uh, offensive, but I do know that there are some people on Turtle who, they like to be the, uh, the underdog, the protagonist that has a rough upbringing, and they insist on only doing one thing, like people who will play Elemental Shame and even when you have two healers in a 40-man raid or people who play Red Paladin the same way. Like, the people who say, I want to join and I want to do only this one thing. Would um, they be welcoming hard chores? You're welcome. The issue is just if we start do a dungeon and we only have one healer, then and we ask you to heal and you don't want to, then the dungeon might not happen. And then, sure. And if then the next time we need an extra DPS and we have someone else who does swap, right? They're more likely to get invited. I think if you put yourself in a corner, then you don't always get picked when people need stuff or they want you ask for help. I think everyone's welcome as any spec. It's just you have to be realistic when you go in MC and you have eight enhancement shamans and no healers. You just say, yeah, we don't, don't go MC. And then when people, when we... I think at least that's how I do it as a raid leader. Like if the guy says, oh, I'll, I'll swap, but the moment we get an extra healer, I want to be back to DPS. And then, sure, you can go back to DPS, and the guys will all say, no, I just want to stick to enhancement. They get put bottom of the list, right? Since they, it's like you all want to help each other out, and if you only want to do your only thing, like if your goal is to get, let's say, um, Nightfall, that's your only goal, and yeah, okay, you can fulfill your goal within the guild, but if you don't want to assist with other stuff, then it's just People will help you out less. You're welcome for sure. You just have to be realistic that some specs will get picked a lot less. Uh, let's say for UBRX, UBRS, for example, you have seven classes you need or something specs. And if there's three spots left, then you're not going to pick three Boomkins, for example. You probably pick an extra warrior, or an extra rogue, or an extra mage if you can. Mm -hmm. They're welcome for sure. But it's Especially all about just. And Oh, sorry. But it's overall just being nice. Like, you're in this community, right? So, it, it only makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, we had an announcement show me you played a proc build. I'm not a fan of it, but it did decent damage, right? That we like to show me. Like, so, he played with the Blade of Internal Darkness from Maradon, and then all the, the fiery hit proc charms, right? So, he would proc like 10 weapon enchantments every hit or something. <laughs> it would do decent damage, but the moment, like, he he won't scale into further rage, right? Since you have like eight or ten items locked in position, and all the other items don't add much to your damage besides like hit and crit chance. And like in rage, your hit and your spell hit and your physical hit will go down. And you can't get both up. So he's like at a peak, right? He's like at peak DPS now, and he won't go higher after and after he gets gear. There's like something like a melee hunter. I've seen a melee hunter in softcore. Uh, was doing Blackwing layer. Didn't perform super well, but it, it's it works. But you just skill very poorly, and especially as melee. If you're melee hunter, you also need all the gear that all the other melee use. You already usually have so much melee. Then it's like you can't. You have to. You have to pick, right? And then it's like, do we take an extra melee hunter or bring an extra warrior or an extra rogue? Or, and then yeah. you either have to, like, if you do more for the guild than the other guys, you get to pick, right? It's it's not like, let's say, if you're a melee hunter, you really want to do it. If you farm a shit ton and help everyone out, you'll be liked enough by other people, right? It's also so suspect if you're a dick in every guild. If you ask for help, no one will help you. And if you're super nice, even if you're slightly worse, you get along. You just, 
but the, on hardcore the only downside is if you're really shit uh that people can die because you're, of your mistakes then that's the only real difference between softcore and hardcore yeah so it definitely sounds like you guys aren't like fully tried like you only you only accept x and expect for each class so that's cool it's, to hear it's it's not full try hard but you have to be realistic like you can't bring every especially when we started ubers right we had like a boom kin and like an elemental shaman it was like yeah okay we can go with two healers or one of you guys to heal and then one guy said yeah i'll heal right and then it's fine but if both say no we don't want to heal when you have two healers and do ubers for the first time then I'm the tank, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not going in. Then uh, number two tank, you can tank, and he's like, yeah, I'm not doing it either, right? And then it's, it's like you have to be a little bit able to adapt, but since it's also for fun, you have to be kind of flexible, which I'm not always, but the other people don't mind, so then we just uh, then have to just suck it up, right? It's not a lot to ask for like hybrid classes to also be prepared to play other specs. I don't feel like that's a really big ask. You know, it's not a super big ask, but if they don't want to, like, and they've played that spec before, right? And they've been in a situation where they're pretty much never playing the spec they want, and this is the first time. Like, a lot of people in Turtle World come to play the spec they want, and it's not to min max or to raid on hardcore, and it's just more like that something happens and they like the spec and they also want to raid. It's not like they want to raid and play that spec, they want to play that spec. It's their main choice. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's rough sometimes, but. You have to make decisions, and not always everyone's going to agree with that. But if you have like 30 people's live on the line, and you have to either say, No, you're not allowed to, and the other 30 people are fine with them not dying, then it's easier than, Yeah, just invite them. And if someone dies, someone dies, right? It's people have invested a lot of time, so everyone's a little bit more safe. Yeah. Well, at least with like twenty man raids, which I assume you guys are gonna do first, obviously, it's gonna it's gonna add like a bit more calm flexibility, but not make it so you could like have a full raid of boomkins, of course, or enhancement shamans. No, I think we only had like we had two boom like one active boomkin and one guy who leveled as boomkin and got sixty and or fifty nine and wanted to raid and it was like he joined a few runs, but like at starter gear, your damage as boomkin is just like especially on dungeons where half the stuff is cleavable you just don't do anything comparatively to others and just yeah. it's boring since the class is pretty much the same as it was on classic so it the, kind of relies uh, on the warlock too pretty much yeah for the mm, yeah i guess yeah true but it's i don't know it's just so minor that um the change between classic and here that for for boomkins and elemental zombies they just stop pretty quickly since it just half the time they're drinking and for mm. dungeons for 20 mans i think it's more fun and castles are better than physical since most of the fights are not as safe in melee as possible and without roll buffs so i think for for those points they're better they have more will have more fun since you'll drink more often between pulls just to be safe yeah and i think they're viable in certain fights just you need certain classes and then you want as many like he, for zg you don't really want to do a full CG clear without three or four maids on hardcore, just for the polys and CCs and decurs and stuff. So that and then you need like you you won't go CG on hardcore with four healers. You probably go with six or seven or eight even for the first few times. Still, you know everyone knows what to do. Yeah, because it's definitely can't... not like a speed run kind of scenario. You just take it super slow and safe. Yeah, like when we did CG for like we were planning to do it and then two of the mages didn't show up and then you don't have zero mages so we kill the x spinners like one double pack nothing bad right and then the melee swaps a little bit too late on the second spec so we have two of the spinners alive and we didn't have a poly we didn't have a death coil since the coil was used on the first pack and uh, you have like 10 melee almost dying pretty much right like they drop really low and that's like yeah okay this is that's why we want mages right it's like Everyone instantly knew, fuck, I, th I thought I almost died. And then it's like, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. now, now it's clear, right, why you need mages. But, like, physical is not safe on hardcore, especially without wall buffs. You're just super squishy. Yeah. But that's that's for a lot of class, right? Like, mages are for CG, for AQ20, uh, for MC. MC is slightly less, but still a decursion, right? So for all the 20 men's mages are king. Like, super strong. And for all the dungeons... 
they're super strong as well. It just, I don't know. People like it's just still unpopular. Yeah, they like the the warrior class. I don't want to say the type of guy that wants to pad meters. It's probably not going to be a fit for you guys. Um, someone who's like a true parsed, you know, wouldn't be a great fit. If you're a good player and you're parsing, it works, right? If you're if you're parsing like most of the people are privates or certain guilds or whatever, or even on retail, they just they carve for the parse more than like it's like hunter shot hunters multi shotting on pearl and then they do more damage than the other hunters waiting three, but the mob runs out right and hits someone else yep. and they faint. And that's yeah, the yeah that's what I mean. Shit you don't want, but the type of people who would rather yeah. vibe until they get a kill where they are the top DPS. Yeah, exactly. That's like that's the type of guy who would unlike Fenchris Sapper the ads and then vanish or faint death it. Yeah, exactly. And then someone else who heals them or thinks, oh, uh, they've to taken like 90% of their 90%, so someone must have AoE threat. And then the mates start AoEing and they panic because there's no AoE threat. It's just like five Sappers from random people. Yeah. But it's like parsing is not a hardcore thing. Trying to do top damage while being really safe is more about awareness. Like, if you're aware, you'll do good damage anyway. Yeah. So, we're just about at two hours already. It's been a good podcast, this episode. For sure, for sure. It was great um, to have I you guess on. I have a... I have a final question for uh, Chidi. Uh, Chidi, do you ever see yourself... Um, how to say... Uh, returning to... Uh, hardcore rating on this server or are you just going to and I mean hardcore as in not you know the game mode hardcore but like the uh, high expectations high level rating or are you completely done with that on turtle uh, you mean just normal rating like uh, the normal like speedrun rating and like I'm, I'm never a speedrun rating I just like quick clears like speed run is like for me speed running is like all the, the skip poles and uh, doing everything perfectly for me when i was raiding i guess i never raided with you you joined pretty much after me and zoomer was gone yeah. when i joined um i don't know for me it's just chain pulling that's just how the game is that's not even speed running for me um the way we did next was just okay uh, old old mobs are dead Make sure to pull the next one. It's not like waiting around deciding like the assignments are done before the raid or spreadsheets or whatever. Just normal. That's like normal rating for me. I don't think that's speed running. I'm not sure if I'll I'll do, don't do that on the server. I think anymore because it's kind of casual server to be fair. I think the population that of good players is very narrow and split over multiple guilds because every guild has their own group and friends and shit. Mm-hmm. So it's. I think the quality to get a good speedrunning guild is small and the time I want to spend on that is even is not there at the moment so I don't think I'll be doing any speedrunning um, I'll probably maybe see if the new raids I'll probably join one or two runs with either bug or whatever just to see the new raids and how buggy they are or if it's doable for hardcore but again that's just to scout what what's What's up, Brian? Yeah, like prepare for like when you're gonna do it as hardcore. Yeah, if it's doable at all, right? Since the the custom mm-hmm. dungeons, the vaults and uh, crypts and uh, black morass are semi buggy or semi risky, and all the gear was sixty, so we didn't bother with it, right? Since it's and you can only do it as a five man. It has a gear requirement too for vaults, I'd say. For what? It has like a soft gear requirement for uh, well, it's, it's a really like hard dungeon for just a level of, like sixty yeah. ish. Yeah, you need certain class right because there's a lot of poison stuff. I recall all the spiders volley, and so you kind of want to show me, but you kind of also want a mage. So you need a show me mage, and you want a priest buff or either pre buff before you go into the dungeon, and then. You need a tank that's probably a warrior since paladins will probably get clapped in that dungeon. Might be viable now, but when I did it, like all the values were higher, right? So I think they tuned it a couple of times. We yeah. might try those out, but again, it's a new dungeon that some people have never done, right? And then on hardcore, that's not the best combination of totally unaware of uh, a dungeon. 
There's not like any gear you'd specifically want anyway. I feel like maybe the trinket, but which trinket? At the attack speed and mounting one, but it's not like super oh, yeah. super good. Yeah, it's like a niche thing, right? It's not super break or break your class. Nah, exactly. So I feel like we could uh, end the stream here. We're just to just about over two hours. Yeah, sounds good, man. Uh, thanks for having me and uh, for all the questions and uh, some things I didn't think about, like the auction house and stuff. Uh, that might be just for sixty, and it's always fun to chat a bit about how the server's doing and especially hardcore. It's been a great insight to the hard choice community as well. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm gonna include a link to their Discord server in the description. And with that, I think we can just call it off here. Thanks everybody for tuning in and see you next week. See you next week. Thanks for joining again, Chidi. No problem. Thank you for having me.